Hello, 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 ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for hitting that play button once again for the Hetty Coleman podcast, where I love to have going conversations with fabulous people because I really like getting their story out there. And I believe that you learn from their stories, you are inspired by them, and you connect. And today, today, ladies and gentlemen, Today, I sit down, not sit down, I video, I look at through the screen because of the coronavirus, <laughs> the one and Dang. only Sean C. Johnson. Let's give it up for what Sean up, C. Johnson. Patty? Yeah. What's up, my that man? Crowd noise in there. Yeah. I'm doing good, man. I'm hanging in there, bro. You I'm know, hanging in there. You know what I'm thinking about right now? I haven't seen your new crib. You haven't? No. You actually have it. I have not been over to the uh, new What's crazy crib. is technically I'm closer to you now than I was in Dale City. So Well you probably I'm, can... I'm right I'm right on the edge of Edmond. Like I'm as far north Oklahoma City as you can go. Aren't you by uh Quell Springs Mall? Mm-hmm. I'm right behind Quell Springs. Yeah. Like, I can walk to Quell Springs Mall. Yeah. Do you it's ever right walk have you ever mall. walked there? I have when I when it was open, yeah. <laughs> I would go to the movie theater. <laughs> I would just walk over there. Like I'm not finna drive. I'm just gonna walk over here. See thank you, thank you very much. Yeah. Now, have you had a date and you walked over there? Say what? I said, have you had a date and walked over there? Like you had your date? No, no, you? no, no, no. No. <laughs> you just walked. I don't to think the- I haven't gotten that far in a relationship in a in a while. So yeah. <laughs> Usually when you first start out, you want to, you want to get your best foot out there. You want to you want to start walking. So yeah, man. You gotta show them the ride first. No yeah. man, that's how you know if they real or not. You be like, hey, meet me nah, at the got, mall. I'm gonna walk nah, over you gotta there. Make sure they love you first before you start walking. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> make sure they love you first. That's what you, that's what you gotta do first, huh? That's now, it. Yeah, I'm a, yeah. Now, ladies and you can uh, follow and connect with Sean at SeanCJohnson.com or you can uh, follow him on social media at Sean C. Johnson. And I think, Sean, you're on just about every platform, aren't you? For the most part, except for TikTok. I am not on TikTok. You will not find me <laughs> what? on anybody's TikTok. Have you seen what? I'm, I'm 30 plus. Ain't no way. Have you secured the, no- the handle yet? I have not. Somebody else can have it. I'm not gonna be able. To. I'm just. There's just some stuff. I'm just. I'm good. I will miss out on this wave. <laughs> Whatever TikTok is, is and what it is going to be, I'll just miss out on. It. So I'm, you, I'm, I'm, I'm cool. Have you even looked at it? <laughs> I have. I went on there. Like some of my students, when I was going up to Douglas, um, they got me in. They they wrote me into doing a couple of TikToks with them. But outside of that, um, yeah. I'm good. So you're in, so way. you're in the uh, TikTok uh, uh, world then. Like there's some of Sean Johnson yeah. in, in TikTok. There's there might be a clip of me somewhere floating around. I don't even know how TikTok works. I don't know how long it stays. Does it stay up there until you take it down? Or I'm is not, it like 24 hours? No, I think it stays around. I don't think it's like okay. Snapchat. I don't even know, bro. So. <laughs> If they put it up there, I'm still on there. So yeah. now, I'm just cool. Hey, I'm just cool. I'm gonna tell way. you I'm, I'm gonna tell you cool. you sound like those people who said they'd never get on Facebook. Now everybody and their grandma is <laughs> on Facebook. I'm just gonna be I'm gonna go on and tell you now that that's who you sounded <laughs> like right now. When when I see you on TikTok, I'll be like, Sean, I thought you wouldn't get on TikTok. That's hilarious. How, <laughs> how's like, an artist wait, gonna say no to a place where there's billions no. of people? Now see I don't mind my music being on there, but but as far as me like creating TikToks, like okay. or doing the dances, I'm just out on that. I just because I mean, what else is TikTok for other than that? Like, is it just them on there creating these little videos, like of dancing to different stuff? No, I I mean I think people are starting to figure out ways to just like everything else, people start figuring yeah. out ways to create content that's that that suits them because. It's not just people on there dancing. You know, there's people, okay. motivational speakers dropping 15 seconds of encouragement, uh, oh. artists, pe- people doing skits. I think some people are treating it like Vine. Like, you remember Vine? I do remember Vine, yeah. yeah. So I think some people are using it like that. But, you know, okay. it is what it is. I just That's know it. that there's a... i never really on Vine like that either. So yeah. I guess for what I do, 
in the way I present my music, I don't see right now. I don't see the use for TikTok. Now that may change. I will. I will admit that I will be open to change. Yeah, yeah. Right now, I don't. I don't see the benefit of it, but eventually, it may get to that point. So, well, yeah. Said, I wasn't on Facebook before, but I mean, you know, I'm on there now. Heavy. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right. Stuff does change. It now, changes. Right now, it changes. Cool. Right now, though, cool you're not you're not messing with TikTok right now. That's I'm cool. That's respect. I, I have an account, yeah. but I'm not on there a whole bunch. Okay. Just wait a minute. You posted a TikTok? Like you was dancing there? No, I didn't. Not dance. I just kind of <laughs> did more of a. You know, I don't think I've done one. I doubt if I I've done one dance with my family, like with. I, mean, I think yeah, on Bernadette's yeah. uh, TikTok or something. Or, I don't know whose it was, but yeah. See, if I had a family, I'd probably do it. But I mean, nah. It's just me. That'd be really weird, me in here doing all this. You, you know what's just funny? Awesome. You know what's funny, though? It's like, t- it's amazing how, like, I never can imagine Michael Jordan on TikTok, but now some of the most famous athletes are, like, yeah. LeBron James is on TikTok. Michael it's Jordan would never time, have been man. on TikTok with his kids. Ever. <laughs> nah, totally different time, bro. I always think about that. Like, if social media existed, like back in those days, when like Michael, Charles Barkley, like the Dream Team era, like if TikTok or social media existed during that time, we'd have a totally different perception of these athletes. Totally different, bro. Can you see Charles Barkley TikToking or oh, Charles Oakley? My God. <laughs> None of those. Now, cats. Charles. Charles Barkley. Charles Barkley would have thrived in the social media era. As a player, he would have thrived. It would it's tailor made for people like Charles Barkley. But not TikTok. He wouldn't have been talking. He wouldn't have been TikToking though. No, no, no. He wouldn't have been TikToking though. No, no, no. Social media though. He would have had Twitter and all that too. Yeah. Well, he probably yeah, he's, he's crazy though. He it'd have been great to see him. But no, think about it like this. So this is the first time as a professional athlete, like you get to shape the narrative around you. Or even just as a celebrity, yeah, like yeah, you yeah. actually get to input, you get to shape the narrative. Like when something comes out, you actually have a voice and an audience that can immediately listen to that voice. But back in the day, like if somebody put out a story, you really didn't have any 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 way to kind of combat that. Like you didn't have any recourse. No. You just had to take it or try it was slow. Like the turnaround was slow. By the time you actually got to put out something, the story had already made its way around the world. But now today, as a celebrity or a public figure, like you can immediately respond to something and shape the narrative. So yeah, no, I think, I think that's dope. so true. And they use yeah. it like I think th- they use it versus it coming out through the the media. Now they're making their own announcements. You know. Yeah. I think somebody yeah. was saying Tom Brady made his announcement on Twitter or Instagram or something. I was like, tweet, bro, he just put out a tweet. Like, how crazy is that? Like, yeah, that is crazy. <laughs> yeah. I know you, the news people too are mad. Oh yeah, it's it's somebody lost their job, so somebody <laughs> somebody's not working. How anymore. did we not get him to come on <laughs> CBS to make that right. announcement? You know, oh, man. no, uh, he did that. Yeah. He gets to do that deal. himself. I love, it, uh, I love it. Man, we love it. uh maybe let's let's get let's get have you share a little bit of who you are, your story, man. Yes, we sir. just we went straight to TikTok. <laughs> I don't know where we just went. We TikTok and we TikTok and talking about Michael <laughs> Jordan and Charles Barkley. Come on, man. Tell us a little bit about who you are. Where... Man, I'm don't just, say I'm you from Tampa, country, man. Boy. I'm not well, I was born there. You got you're not gonna shape my narrative. I get to tell where I'm from. I was born in Tampa. I can claim Tampa if I was. I was born there. Was not raised there, but I was born there. And I did spend some time. But I mean, I'm a country boy, man. I just I love God and I love music. Um I just really try to use whatever gifts and talents I have to edify other people, man. And that's that's really the the goal. So yeah. That's me. That's me in a nutshell. I'm just a country boy that loves God and loves music. Man, how, so how did you how did you end up uh, getting into music? Well, you're actually a part of that story. Um, so I started um, with a coworker who did audio engineering. He took an audio engineering class, and I would be singing around the shop and stuff. I was in the Air Force at the time. I would be singing around the shop um, and singing for like promotion ceremonies and stuff like that. And he just invited me to the studio. I was like, listen. 
I need a grade. You need the professor to record a song. Let's make this happen. So came in there, did that. Um, eventually, they kept letting us come back. And by the time I was done, I had almost like a full album done. <laughs> and, right. And so it was around that time that me and you got introduced to a mutual friend, Larry um, Larry Knows, who yeah. actually worked at the studio. So that's how we got connected. And then you started doing like um, outreach events. I would go to these outreach events. Uh, people would see me there and invite me to another event. And then you started a really dope event that really changed um, changed the landscape here in Oklahoma City. We tell stories, poetry night. So that was really pivotal in my career. Like when you started that, and I was able to consistently be on the stage and hone my craft. Like that was instrumental in my development. Like it was pivotal in my development. So from there, people would see me at that event. They invite me to another event. So I see at that event. Invite me to another event. Then eventually, I just brought my own equipment and just started putting out my own material. And doors just started to open, man. Yeah. It just, it really just kind of steamrolled from there. Yeah, it wasn't something that I chased. It was really just God just opened. It. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. So, when you were a kid, did did you imagine yourself being an artist at some point? Were you creative so, as a kid? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, I was. I've always sung, and as a kid, like you had those dreams and those aspirations to kind of be like an artist. But as we got older, those dreams kind of faded. You know, reality hit. It's like, all right, I need to get a job. Like, I can't be chasing this this dream. But I mean, God just really brought it back to me. Like this deep desire that I had, like he brought it back to the forefront. It was just really just God in his time. And like I said, I was in the Air Force. Like that was my mindset. Like I'm in the Air Force, I'm gonna ride this out for 20 years. And then we'll figure it out from there. But like God had other plans. Like yeah, yeah. he just really just oh, it wasn't something I chased. He just really just brought this to me, and I've been trying to steward it as best as I can ever since then. So that's pretty but yeah, amazing. I, mean, I had them dreams. It really is, man. God is God is dope like that. Man. Yeah, that's really pretty is. cool. Now, um, whenever you were, uh, how, how long were you in the Air Force before you end up having to get out? What What's the story there? And thank uh, you for serving. I was in. You're welcome. Um, I was in 12 years actually. So I joined in 2000. Um, May of 2000, the day after I graduated, and I got out uh, maybe like January, February of 2012. So right at around 12 years, right at a little bit less than 12 years. Um, and I ended up getting medically discharged. It was really, it was really, when I look back on it, it was God. Like, God was like, all right, I'm going to, because I wouldn't have left. I would have just stayed in there <laughs> had God not pushed me out the door. It's like, all right, you plan. We're going to get you up out of here. <laughs> We're going to push you into your destiny. And it was just kind of worked out that way, man. God. And just, shoot, that was like 2012. So it's eight years now. Yeah. So it's been eight years that I've been out of my own doing music full time. And just kind of like, and just to see how God has provided, man, it's just, it's crazy when I think about it. Like, I couldn't have wrote the script. How my life has played out, I couldn't have wrote the script. Yeah. Like, there's no way I could have so yeah so that means that this year would be the year that you would be retiring yeah that's crazy that's insane yeah that is pretty cool <laughs> though the Air Force this year. yeah man it's dope though i mean it worked out honestly man I, I essentially got to retire early like from the air force like they looked out for me like i got some benefits you know i got some lifelong benefits that i'm able to to sustain me but uh, but God has been good, man. God yeah. has really been good. Now, yeah, since, since doing this, so how, how long have you? Would you say from the time that you, you first did recorded that that song yeah. in the studio to now? How many years have that been? And, and in that, oh, what what have you seen change? So it's funny. My cousin sent me a, a screenshot of my very first email that I sent out when I first started my website, and it was in two thousand and six. Like when I first like got my URL and actually like sent it out to people like, hey, follow my website, you know, sign the guest book, guest book and all that stuff. That was in like March. Actually, it was like March 19 of 2006 is when that happened. So that's shoot, 14 years now. So like this month has been four, is exactly 14 months from the day I like started my career. Like when I when I first had my website. And put that out there, man. So it's been 14 years I've been doing this, man. Yeah. It's crazy. What, yeah. What what, it's crazy have, what, I think. what have been some things that uh that has uh changed over the hold, hold on a sec. Somebody let's see if you we good. Can, uh, I see that. I see somebody, somebody calling me in the back. What up? We're doing good. Hey, can I right now I'm doing the uh, um you see that? 
I'm podcasting right now. <laughs> you already had your moment. Why are you trying to get in on other people? <laughs> part two, part two. Part two. Uh, all right. All right. Uh huh. Bye. Bye. That's hilarious. So, yeah. So, what has changed? Yeah. What has changed over the 14 years? Like, what are some things that you like? Man, this man. has been crazy change for me. So I think um, more than anything, just the way we promote music has changed. I remember trying to find somebody to get my video on um, BT. I remember that being a big thing. And now, like, that's not even a thing. <laughs> <laughs> or even just putting my music to radio or trying to get my music in the radio. Like, the way we go about promoting, like, it's really geared towards independent artists now. Like, we have a lot of power and direct access to our fans, which I think is is dope. Like, yeah. we don't necessarily need the label. Like, we don't need them to be able to put out music and to reach our fans. Like, we can create our own way apart from them, which I think is dope. But that's probably the biggest thing. Like, when I first started, it was all about trying to sign to a label, all about trying to get a video on BT, all about trying to get on the radio. But, like, all that stuff is really just, I wouldn't say irrelevant now, but it's, like, it's not as, as big a priority as yeah. it once was. But that's probably one of the biggest changes. But outside of that, I think me, I started to pay more attention to my brand. And I wish, I wish in the beginning someone had set me down and, and preached the importance of your brand. Like, because this is what people are gonna associate with you through the rest of your career and potentially uh, it'll elevate, you know, where you're at. But like I didn't pay attention at all to my brand in the beginning. In some aspects I did, like as far as my name, like Sean C. Johnson and getting that, you know uniform across, you know, different platforms, but just the presentation of my music, I wish I had paid more attention to the branding of everything. And now it's, it's, I see the benefit of it now and it's not too late. Like I've been able to kind of, you know, course correct a little bit, but I think in the beginning, I wish I had paid more attention to that, like yeah. my branding. So yeah. So yeah. when you say there were some opportunities, I missed out on, yeah. What now, when you say that you course correct, can you give us some examples of like, not being mindful yeah. of your brand, starting to be mindful of your brand, you made some tweaks. What what would that have looked like? Just in my presentation, like my beard is a perfect example. Like this is the reason. What one of the main reasons I did this was um, it's a it's a theory called the um, the Halloween theory, where essentially if someone were to dress up as me for Halloween, how would you know it was me? Like what the, what's the sneak about me as an artist that people will automatically associate and be like, oh, you're dressed up as such and such. Like with, with Jay-Z, it'd be a New York fitted cap or something like that. Um, Kanye, it'd be the glasses with the little slits in it or something like that. But it's just like little things that automatically associate to this brand. But okay, that's associated to him. So like this is part of it. And even just my um, my dress, the way I dress on stage, like <laughs> I used to not care at all. That video you sent me, matter of fact, <laughs> the video you sent me earlier. So I look like a homeless person in that video. <laughs> the way I, I did not care. Like, but like someone sat me down and told me, like, listen, like as an artist, people should be able to look in the room and be able to point out who the artist is. Like you should be, there should be something about you that's different than everybody in that room. Like as an artist, like we are, for our worst, we are spokesmen, we are billboards. Like we are people, people look up to us in a sense. Like they're look, people are looking to the artists to lead the way in fashion, um, in everything. Like they're looking to us to lead the way in these different areas. So it's like, as an artist, you have a responsibility to, to do that, like to present a certain thing, to be that, you know, that people look up to, so. But I, I've I've done more. I'm I'm more intentional about those things. Now. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. That's legit. Yeah. That's legit. So, how many albums have you done? So it has been two, three, four, five. I think it's eight, eight or nine. We think. Okay, so simply a vessel, simply a vessel, volume two, joy, um, volume three, grateful. Um, what is it? Circa, then um, Race the Sun, and then Days Like This. So eight. So this is my the project that I, or the content I'm putting out now. This is project nine. So eight projects now. So yeah. So so, yeah. so eight projects. You know, yeah. you've always singing your your thing, right? And uh, you yeah. have a certain sound. Over those mm -hmm. over those eight albums, 
have you had to adjust your sound? Have you added a new oh, element to who you are? And what, what does that look like for you as an artist? Absolutely. So my third album, I started rapping. Volume three is when I first started rapping. And that was a new ring. That was something I kind of added. Up until that point, it just been straight vocals, straight singing. But um, volume three was when I first started rapping. And then... What song was the that? turning point for me... That wasn't... Uh, uh, MLMX? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's probably yeah, one of my yeah, favorites. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Martin Luther Michael yeah, X. I think yeah, that's the yeah. first one I started rapping on. Yeah. 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 That's what I that's what yeah. I was thinking. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was legit. But I think the turning point um artistically was the album Circa nineteen ninety three. Like that was the album where I really just kinda honed into my own lane. Like, all right, I'm planting a flag. This is my sound. This is me. Like I think it was probably at that point. And I kind of found my sound before then, but like I really kind of dug into it at that point. Like I found my voice. Yeah. With circa nineteen three, um, and then even since then, like I think it's important as an artist to not necessarily jump on every wave, but at least to sound um, to sound current. Like you definitely have to be mindful of what the current sound is and incorporate those elements into what you're doing. Not necessarily saying you have to do everything exactly how they do it, but be be um be present in the fact that all right I need to have something that doesn't sound dated like you, that's the worst thing you can do as an artist is sound dated like so you want to grow as an artist and incorporate different sounds like stay in your lane but it definitely incorporate these different pieces and things mm. like that so so yeah. you keep you yeah. keep something like definitely. oh man that's definitely Sean Johnson but there's a yeah. new he's it still sounds, relevant it's still it sounds now yeah it sounds like it it fits with you can play my song back to back with whatever is out there and it doesn't just, it's not like a totally different, it's not completely left. Like it actually fits in this space and time. So I think that's important as an artist. Like you need to definitely be original, but don't be so rigid in the fact that you don't, that you just sound dated. Like you definitely gotta be aware of what's out here. So yeah. yeah. How, how do you do that? Like that's hard because not everybody can pull it off. It man. is. It's not, it's not. I think it's just um, being willing to be adventurous as an artist. And I think as fans, they need to allow the artist the space to grow. And I think one thing that has helped me is I try not to make the same album over and over again. And I have to explain that to certain people like, oh man, I wish you could, I wish, I wish you sounded like volume three. I was like, listen, I can't make that album again. Like, I've already made that album. Like, <laughs> I can't just keep making the same album over and over again. So I think it's a combination of fans being willing to let artists grow and then artists being uh, brave enough to try something different, um, to kind of incorporate these different things and just, and try. Like, I mean, I've, I've always said this, I think artists are some of the bravest people on the planet because like we get to expose a part of ourselves and open ourselves up to be judged by complete strangers. Like, so it's, and that's a scary thing to do and not everybody's able to do it. So, um, yeah, it takes a bit of bravery to be able to just jump out there and try something and to expose your your work. Like, this is a part of me. This yeah. music is a, an extension of me and who I am. And it's like, when that's received or not received, like, I'm affected by that. So it, it takes, it's it plays, both both parties play a part in that. It takes yeah. the fan being willing to let the artist grow and the artist, artist being brave enough to, to try something different. So. Cool. Yeah. Hey, you got something right there. I don't know if you did. Do I? Yeah, there you Thank go. Thank you, man. Yeah, I appreciate. It. I, ain't tr- I ain't trying to edit. I'm not trying to edit. I don't want to. Edit. I'm not. Hey, hey I'm not that good. You the best. Hey man, they would have had you on TikTok. They would have had you on TikTok. This whole video looking crazy. Thank you. Um, no. Um, yeah. So, so that's so true because I know that there's been times where I've there's been a, a, an artist and you just kind of hear him. And the, or her, yeah, and they man. don't they don't make any changes, and so that's cool for you to yeah. be. One, I think, too, just being mindful of that, being self aware, uh, self aware, having people man, around you is gonna tell you the truth. Like, dude, you, so, yeah, this no, ain't two thousand six no more, at all. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to update the beats. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we gotta change the rhythm a little bit, change the melody. You can't, yeah. Yeah, it ain't working, man. That stuff ain't popping no more, man. Uh, yeah. Do you have a favorite song out of all your songs? Sheesh. Um, so it's a toss up between Angels and um, 
Silver and Gold remix, the Neo Soul remix. Oh, okay. One is a Neo Soul remix, the Silver and Gold Neo Soul remix. That's off of Grateful, and Angels is off of Race the Sun, the Race the Sun project. So yeah, those are probably two of my favorite songs. What, which... And that changes. It depends on the day, but as of right now, those are my. Those two are your two. What what yeah. which do you think has been your fan favorite? Oh, uh, so it's the toss up between Well Done, Mountains, No Never, and probably Save Me. So those four. Five o'clock's not up there. Nah. What? At a time. What depends on when you became a fan, like when you got introduced to Sean. True. So for the so for the people who got to introduce me around that time, yeah, five o'clock. But five o'clock didn't do the numbers that Mountains, No Never, and even um, if I if I just went strictly by the numbers, Mountains is probably my biggest song. Okay. If I just went by the numbers, Mountains is probably my biggest song. And that's the one I get I get hit up about the most. It's probably Mountains. Now, are, are, do you think Mountains came out at, at your peak? Like, are yeah? So that was that was that. So circa nineteen ninety three. I wouldn't say that was my peak, but that was the album where I really kind of came into my own. Like, yeah, that yeah, was, yeah, Like this yeah. is like yeah. I finally found my sound. Like I became more confident in my sound. So yeah. that was the album that did that. And I think Mountains was a perfect reflection of that because even like believe it or not like as crazy as it sounds like mountains was a risk for me like sonically it was a risk it didn't sound like anything else i put out before then so like the fact that i was able to to take that risk and it paid off like it just kind of cemented as like i'm on the right path so and and for it to do the numbers that it did like it's my most streamed song on spotify um, yeah, it's almost at a million. Matter of fact, it might be at a million right now. Looked at it yesterday, it was like 200 away from a million. So I think by the end of this week, it should be at a million. So, which is crazy. That crazy That's crazy. Yeah. So what, yeah, is, what does it mean? So you just, and we won't get into this just yet, but you just recently had a, yeah. a, a project come out, uh, Gallery 93. You had a song drop on. Yeah. Uh, I did. What, so I didn't buy it because I, yeah, yeah. I had Apple music mm-hmm. that i pay every month for absolutely so you i didn't both. it didn't even yeah. give me the option to buy. i don't think it just yeah, down, yeah. right you can't i don't even do y'all even have itunes on your phone anymore no. i don't have an iphone i have i do have apple music it's an app on android so yeah we buy it. yeah but i don't even think people have itunes anymore like so how do you get crazy. paid as an artist now like do you, do you get so paid by each stream oh, okay now, it's it's fractions of a penny now it, it, but it adds up. But uh, I look at it like this: like over the life of that song, I'll I'll stand to make more than ninety nine cents or a dollar from that one song. Over the life of that song, like say if someone just brought it that one time, that's ninety nine cents. But if they stream it for a lifetime, I'll make more than that ninety nine. Oh, cents. I see what you're saying. So I mean, eventually, eventually it pays off. But I mean, it's just it has to. People have to stream it. Like they have to keep listening to it. So yeah. Because the chances of you selling a million albums. Yeah. <laughs> you know. I would have to. If I'd have to stream a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to be doing Drake numbers, which I'm far from that. So yeah, I'm very very far from that. So, but streaming is one of those things. Like it's a wave you can't fight. Like some things you can push back on, but sometimes you just gotta ride the wave. Yeah. But we just gotta figure it out. And I, I look at it like this, like, so because I do have a catalog and, and the majority of my music is on these streaming sites, I see a consistent amount each month. So it's like I'm getting dividends from it. Like, I feel like as an artist, if you have a lot of content, streaming actually works out for it. Like, you get these consistent streams mm-hmm. each month, and it's been pretty steady. So I see a check from that every month, and I was like, this is pretty decent. Like, this is not bad. Like. So as my profile increases, like I feel like those numbers will definitely go up. And as I put out more content, it's it's gonna continue to go up. So and like I look at it like this, there's a whole a whole bunch of people who haven't been who have no idea who I am. And like as soon as they find my music, they get to go back and stream the rest of my music. So like there's a whole lot of people my music still hasn't been exposed to. So it's just like that's just more potential streams down the line. So and I feel like most of my music is pretty timeless. So I feel like 
it's, it doesn't sound dated. So I feel like if they go back and hear the music, it'll still be just as relevant. So. No, I was jamming after five o'clock in the morning. You know, like it's exactly. still. That was two thousand and nine, maybe. Was that when? The, yeah, I don't yeah. know, but it was yeah, it was, was going just as. That was over ten years ago. So yeah. yeah, no, that's yeah. good. But I like what you said yeah. though. Like the the more you add to your catalog, the greater the opportunity for you to make more money. Right. More discovery. Yeah. 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 Where a lot discovery of people, music. they they give up I almost feel like versus keep keep producing. Yes. Why? Why is that? Like, and it's easier now, it's, right, it, to make it's an it's album. It is a so. There's so many. It's so easy to put out music now. Like, I think that's the good and the bad. Like, anybody can put out an album, but literally anybody can put out an album. Like, so I mean, that's the good. That's the yin and the yang of it. But like I said, like I feel like. Most artists get discouraged because they don't get that initial um, gratification. Like as an artist, like you know, it can be hard because like you put all these years and months into making this project, you don't get that immediate return on it. Like, and I get why it would be discouraging, and it'd be, and I, it's funny. I almost blame Fifty Cent for this because like he put the focus on numbers. Like when he came out, he was saying, you're not selling more than me. I'm selling more than that. Like I'm doing these numbers. You're not doing that. So that made everybody focus on the numbers now. So it's like everybody's focused. All right, how many streams did I get? How many of this did I get? And social media doesn't help either because I, right, how many followers do I have? Do I have yeah. a blue check? So it's like these certain milestones that people look at to validate you. And as an artist, like we're, we're successful with that. Cause I mean, we're human. So we're, we're susceptible to being like, all right, am I being received? Am I being validated? What do my numbers look like? All right, so what does validate me? Like, so I mean, it's it's a catch twenty two, but I feel like when you start to play those numbers games, like that's when you lose track of like, all right, why am I doing this? What is yeah. the benefit of like who's who's being impacted by this? But for an artist, it's not always easy to push through that. Like every every artist is not at a place where they can just kind of push through. Or they may not even have the time on a resource. Like I'm fortunate that I'm single. Like it's just me. Yeah. Like for the, all of my career, for the majority of my career, I've been single and on my own. So I a lot of my time and attention can go to this. Like I can I can go back to the drawing board and and invest this money into this. But everybody's not able to do that. So it's like if you take all this time, like as a if I were a married man and I invested like five thousand dollars into an album and I didn't get that money back. It'd be real hard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come around, and be like, All right, I want to put another five thousand. You see what I'm saying? So yeah, if it don't pop off, yeah, it'd yeah, be real yeah. hard to do that. No, that's cool. Uh, talking about likes and followers and all that stuff, streaming numbers. You know, one I didn't realize that people really pay attention to the uh, blue check. Like my son, yeah. uh, Zell, and my <laughs> daughter, who my son's fourteen, daughter's thirteen, were sitting up talking about the blue checks. You know, yeah, like, man. I guess on TikTok, they have it a different way that you get a, a check versus oh. they do it something different. And he's telling, I'm like, I don't even know that you, why would you, why was a kid? But again, that, <laughs> that kind of speaks to like, oh, are you the real deal? Are you the real deal? Yeah. Are you validated? Are you worth me paying attention? Like it gives you value. Like you see the blue check. It's like, oh, you must be somebody else. Yeah. Important. So it just kind of gives that. And I, I <sighs> I see the benefit of it, but like, so like, like social media is like for all the good, for all the bad that it may bring, like there's a lot of good that comes with social media. Like, so I'm not, I'm not trying to throw the baby out with the bath water, but I do think um, it's important to, to be, to be grounded in reality. Be like, this isn't my value. My value isn't attached to this blue check or how many followers I have. Like I'm worth more than this. Like nobody could ever, ever, ever pay me what I'm worth. So it's like, or ever tell me what I'm worth. So it's yeah. like, it's, 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 it's a lot, but, but I mean, you have to have that mindset. It is like, what it you, is. you have no, to, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Some people don't have that. They, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so on Instagram, you got about 11,000 followers, uh, Twitter, you got about six, almost six or something like people mm -hmm. following you. Know? Yeah. What, what do you do? Like, that's a lot. Like in comparison, like, that's that's a that's a pretty good I number. Mean, no, it's, yeah, I'm, I'm grateful. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what yeah. what do you think has been the key to be able to 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 for you to get your your fans to actually follow you? I think um, looking at every post as content. Um, 
it doesn't even if it's just a, a simple status, but making it to the point where it's it's worth people engaging and just being genuine and being who I am. Like I think people, especially on Facebook and even Instagram and Twitter, like I'm very um, big on just being showing my personality, and I think that has helped me. Like it's just the quirky or even just the the random stuff that I'll post, like it's still content. And it's still, even when I don't have a song out, like I can still generate fan engagement and stay in front of people by just posting a simple post or even a, a really dope picture or bringing up a topic or asking these questions and bring up some, you know, some comments or some conversation in the comment section. I think as an artist, you need to look at it like that. Everything I post is content. And I think that's been beneficial for me because it's like, I right, in these downtime in between albums, like I can still engage my fans whether it's me posting clips of me working in the studio, me at a live show, um, just an idea, like a really dope picture from a from a show, like that stuff is content. Like, and it's it's that's the way I look at every post. I right? I just don't want to just throw out just a random post. Like, this is the chance for me to engage with my fans. Yeah, and yeah. that's the way I look, and that's the way I approach each platform. So, yeah, I I recently uh, you you just dropped a, a new project, Gallery ninety three, um, yeah, and somebody had mentioned, I don't know if it was in your comments or something, or if I was just talking to somebody and they give, mm -hmm. essentially gave you props on how you are capable of continue to not, I don't know if recreate yourself is the word, but yeah. Yeah. It's, I, I think I remember the comment. I think it was, um, rebrand or something like that. Like re yeah. Something like that. I know yeah. Like yeah. That. But essentially what they're saying is, you know how to, I think, keep yourself fresh. You yeah. Know, you know, and I, and yeah. I think you do that same <laughs> Yeah. With, with some of your content when it's not even about an album or music, I think you continue to keep yourself fresh. You keep yourself relevant. Absolutely. You willing Absolutely. to throw stuff out there that most may, people may not, you know. I share a lot. I do share a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which <laughs> I think that helps. That, some, yeah. There's going to be certain yeah. people who's going to connect with that, right? They be like, Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. It, with the new project, is, it, uh, go ahead. What you say? Authenticity. Yeah. I try to like everything. I try to be authentic. So yeah, that's the biggest thing. But go ahead. I'm sorry. You said with the new project. T talk to me about it. How did you come up with it? What's the goal? Tell people where they yeah. like. Let's just talk about that real quick. Okay. So the idea behind Gallery 93 is to really look at music for what it is, and that's art. Like I think we've gotten away from just people because music is so. There's so much music out there and everything's so flooded right now that like people, music is almost throwaway. Like people don't value music anymore. But it's like, I look at a Michelangelo or Da Vinci or Leonardo, yeah, I think that's his name, yeah. yeah. Whoever painted the Sistine Chapel. Like Mona Lisa, like whoever painted the Mona Lisa, like the week after it came out, they weren't like, all right, when's the, when's the next painting coming out? Like there's still, people are still showing up to see the Mona Lisa. like. It's a work of art, right? They're looking at it like that. And this is thousands of years old, but it's just like, why can't we view music like that? Like this piece of music that I've put out, like this is a piece of art. Like instead of just rushing to the next thing or whatever, like let's slow it down and view this as art. So that was the initial conception of it. Like the genesis of the idea is like, uh, how can we slow this process down? So like I said, I've got eight projects out right now. And I still feel like my last project that just came out last year is still relevant. Like it's still a really dope project. Like, and I feel like there's still a lot of people who still could hear that and be blessed by it. So it's like, I don't want to keep putting out these bodies of work and just moving on from the last body of work that I had. So it's just like, let's slow this down. Let's slow this whole process down. And what does that look like? So it's like, so my art, inspires other art so it's just like all right if it, in a gallery like you have different types of art so it's like all right music is one form of art fashion is another is another form of art um culinary or cooking food is another form of art painting drawing that's a form of art dancing is a form of art so it's like all right let's take my art my music and see what this would look like if other people were to and be influenced by it. like so i send it to a stylist all right so he listens to the song, all right, style me an outfit based off of the vibe and the content of this song. I'll send it to a chef, all right, based off of the vibe and content of this song, like prepare, cook, cook me a meal, like, you know, prepare a meal for me. Or I'll send it to an artist or a drawer and he'll, based off of the content and everything, how he feels about it, 
he will, you know, draw me a drawing. And it's just kind of like, all right, let's see what that looks like. And this is all housed under Gallery 93. So that's the idea. So each single, like, I, I treat it like an exhibit. Like, all right, this is an exhibit. This is everything that's in house with this. I create a world around this one song. And everybody's able to kind of live in this world for a minute. Like, let's just live in this space for a little bit. Let's not just rush to move on to the next thing. Let's experience what this is and how people are inspired by this art. So that's really just the, the genesis of it. That's the idea behind it. So, yeah, so, man. So, so far, you've come out with one song, came out on the 25th. One song. Yeah, 27th. 27. 27. Last, whatever last Friday. Yeah. And, and in that, so have you, sent, have you sent that song to different artists and let them do what you're talking about? Yeah. Or? Yeah, so I've already sent it to a stylist. I sent it to a um, a cook, somebody who's going to be cooking for it. Um, and then the other songs, so I have some other songs um, ready too, and I've sent it to some guys who's going to be dancing to it and stuff like that. So yeah, I have. I've done it already. So it's just like that content will be rolling out um, in the next couple of weeks. So it's just a different way to kind of, it all ties in because it eventually all of all the content promotes the single. So it's just like this is all just promotional it's not just promotional, but it is, it had, it's twofold. Like it's art, it's content, and it also promotes the single too. So, cause everything ties back to that. So. How will this, how will this come out? Will this be on video form? How, how, so it, how it, will it, we see about the video just, and all that stuff? So it'll be video. Like I'll be posting it on social media. It'll be pictures um, with the, with the photo. So I did a photo shoot with the, with the stylist, the stylist, the style man outfit. We got it together. Like he looked it over. His eye, right, let's do it. So we did that. Did a photo shoot. Um, yeah. So it'll just be, it'll be really. I think people really dig how I present everything. Like I don't want to give away too much, but I yeah, think for it'll, sure. be, it'll be really. Dope. Yeah, how people, how people are able to engage with it. So yeah, it'll be really dope. Like coming up with this, is this you just sitting at the crib by yourself? Or are you brainstorming? <laughs> you got a whiteboard? Or yeah. you talking? Do you got a group of people you pull in and be like, hey? Let's think through my next project. How, how do you go about coming up with this stuff? Oh, like a lot of it is just me just brainstorming and just pulling from different ideas, different experiences. All right, so this worked for this. Like, I right, what's something different? Like, how can I be different? Like, like I said, this is this is technically my ninth project, like my ninth work of art that I'm putting out. It's just like, hi, right, I don't just want to just do the norm, like release the single, do a video, like I've done that so many times at this point. It's just like, all right, I want to do something different. How can we? keep people engaged because like i said there's so much music every it's flooded there's so much music out here how can i keep people's attention for longer than two weeks like how can i put out this song and not have people just move on to the next thing it's like no like we gotta pay attention to this like this is really dope content this is art like i need y'all to appreciate it for what it is like this is this took me a Though it was only a three minute song it took me a, a couple weeks maybe even some months to make this one song like and for people to just digest it in three minutes and just move on to the next, like, no, nah, like, this is, this is art. Like, yeah. just appreciate it for what it is. So, but yeah. But I mean, no, it's just sitting down, brainstorming and coming up with different ideas, shooting other people, like, what do you think about this? Think this would be dope? Like, how can I explain this? Like, how can I, how can I make this make sense to somebody? So, but yeah. So it was a lot of that in the, in the beginning. And then, you know, what you see now is the, the end result. So that's cool. 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 Yeah. Uh, now, now I have to, uh, I, we can't jump off without just talking about uh, what you do in your community. Also for yeah, work man. is, is yeah. mentoring young people. Mm -hmm. Like Absolutely. talk, talk about the why behind that and, and, and uh, how important that is to you. Yeah. So you actually play a role in that too. Um, I think I was fortunate. I had really growing up. I had some really dope mentors. And then as I become a young adult and then an adult male, like I had some really dope mentors, you being one of them. So I look at how that benefited me, and I was like, all right, I know what that did for me. I want to reciprocate this. I want to do this for somebody else because I know what it did for me. So that's kind of that was the heart, the genesis behind it. But then I was able to partner with um, Youth for Christ. I've been with them um, actually since I got out of the Air Force in 2012. Um, so that's eight years now I've been with them. And it's just it's it's one of those things where you get to see you don't always see the immediate fruit from yeah, it, but. Yeah. but I'm I'm confident in the fact that when it says that God's word won't come back won't come back void. So it's like when I put those when I plant these seeds, like I may just be one piece, one piece of it. I may just be the one that plants it, or I may be the one that waters. Like, but eventually, like I get to look back down the road and to see the impact that I've had over shoot. This is eight years now, so eight 
eight years of students. Like I've, I've, able, I've been able to see kids go from middle school to graduation, like from high school graduation. And it's just like really dope to see them grow and to be a part of their journey. It's like, it does, it honestly, God takes a village. So it's like, I'm, I am very much aware that I am not the end all be all. Like it's, I'm just one piece yeah. of this person's. And it's like, you got to keep that perspective. It's like, I'm just trying to be this surround them with as many positive influences as possible. So I'm just doing my part, man. So that's, that's cool. It. Do you, do you have yeah. a, so being able to watch somebody like that, like if somebody came and said, man, what's your, what's your story on Sean Johnson? Like I can tell progression and like i see you do stuff now be like i remember when do you have a i remember when story (laughs) with some of your students let me say um one of the kids what's uh what's his name um trey my dude trey so i remember when he was just a snot-nosed dirty little kid um just running around but like to see him now like he still got a snotty nose but like he um he's like He's an adult, and he's like about to go to the Air Force. And it's just like seeing that. It's just like, oh man, like he's actually he's mature. He he was he was this kid that didn't know he just lose everything, but like now he's like an adult. He's a mature adult. Yeah. And it's just like just seeing that. It's just like it's just really cool. Like yeah, it's almost like having a kid. It's like man, like I remember you couldn't even do nothing. Yeah, now I look at you. You just out here yeah. paying bills. Like it's just it's crazy. Yeah, man, it really is, man. But it's so cool to see, man. And and when it's you know, like, important. you just loving folks, you know, and that's and that's what you that's that's what I think mentoring is all about, just loving people and really trying Absolutely. to in, invest in them and, and and be a part of their life. So, man, I appreciate you, man, uh, yeah, being man. willing to take some time and uh, just yes, kind of share your story and just talk about some of your journey, man. It's so it's so yes, cool sir. to see it. I'm proud of you. Thank you, man. I appreciate it, Hedy. Thank yes. you, bro. Thank you for having me on, man. Yes, sir. Hey, tell people where they can find you again. Yes, Sean C. Johnson, S-E-A-N-C Johnson dot com, um, at Sean C. Johnson on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And as always, as always, ladies and gentlemen, go win.